In our last video, we talked about how to install Octane for Houdini. In this video, I'll walk you through how to set up Octane in a fresh Houdini scene and get rendering quickly. Let's jump right in. At the top of the Houdini interface, click the plus button in the shelf area and select Octane under shelves. This adds a set of Octane tools to your UI, giving you quick access to key features. To get Octane up and running, you just need three things. Number one, the Octane ROP. Click the first button on the Octane shelf. This creates the render output node in the out network. Number two, render target. Click the button right next to the ROP. This creates the render target node inside of the material network. Number three, a camera. You can create this by clicking the camera icon on the top right corner of the viewport and selecting new camera. Now, because managing the Octane ROP and the render target across different contexts can sometimes be a bit tedious, we just added a unified Octane render setup node, an HDA that combines both components into a single node with all the key parameters exposed in one place. This node includes all the same settings as the original render target and ROP nodes, just consolidated for faster access and a cleaner workflow. This is entirely optional. You can still use the separated render target and ROP if you need more flexibility but for many projects, this node offers a more streamlined setup experience. To use it in the object context, press tab, type Octane Render Setup and drop down the node. Create a camera and you're ready to go. That's it. Now you're ready to render. You can start the interactive preview render by clicking the IPR button in the Octane shelf or by going to the out network, selecting the ROP node or in the Octane Render Setup node if you use that and clicking open IPR. Currently our scene is empty, so let's drop in a box so we have something to render. As you can see, the box currently has a magenta color applied to it. This is a sign that this object is missing a material. So let's go to the material context and let's create an Octane Material Builder. Generally, you will use this node when building Octane materials. Then let's drag and drop it onto the box in your scene. You now have your first object rendering with an Octane Material. Both the render target and the octane ROP have key settings you'll want to play with, so let's quickly go over those. An easy way to access the render target is to click the Pick Render Target button in the IPR to quickly access your render target without having to dive into the material network every time. The render target is where you handle most of your rendering settings. This is where you choose your rendering kernel, which in most cases would be path tracing, unless you're wanting to do caustics, in which case you might want to use the photon tracing kernel. Uh, this is where you set up your HDRI or other environments. This is where you can adjust your camera types and image settings. This is where you can set up ACES tone mapping, which is just one click away. Uh, also where you find your post-processing settings and where you set up your AOVs. Just a reminder, don't be afraid to use presets to make your life easier. Now the Octane ROP node, on the other hand, which lives in the out network, is where you control things like the scene update mode, your color space for output files. So for example, if you want to export an ACES CG, that's where you do that. This is where you control your output paths and formats, uh, what kind of EXR compression you want to use, or if you want to use layered or single layer EXRs. This is where you can set up render layers. This is where you set whether your output files will have depth of field or not, where you have your motion blur settings, and where you have the option to export to Orbix. There's also a tab where you can control object inclusion, exclusion for renders. Of course, if you're using the Octane Render Setup, these settings are all found within the render setup without having to dive into the material or the ROP network. Before we wrap up, here are a few tips to make your Octane workflow even smoother. At the top, where your parameter editor is, I recommend creating a new pane tab and pinning it to your Octane Render Setup node. Or if you're using the separate render target and ROP nodes, create two tabs, one pinned to the render target and the other one to the Octane ROP. This gives you quick, always visible access to your key settings, no matter where you are in the scene, and stops you from having to dive around in different networks. In the past, I used to save this as part of a custom workspace, but honestly, since the introduction of the Octane Render Setup node, I find I no longer really need to do that. Another option, especially when using the render setup node is to pack everything into a subnet. If you still prefer the separate node approach, you can create a material network and a ROP network inside the subnet manually and place your nodes there. You can now have one subnet per scene, easily duplicate it, and have different render settings for each shot or sequence. That's it. At this point, you're ready to experiment and start rendering. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.